Are you thinking of taking your art to new heights? Literally, going big, painting big. Uh, maybe you've never considered it. Maybe you've thought about it and haven't wanted to because let's face the reality of large scale paintings. And when I say large scale, um, I guess for the purposes of this, let's just say anything above 18 by 24 inches is getting big. Bigger paintings might require different tools, bigger tools. Uh, and we're going to get into that. But the reason that sometimes we don't want to go big is, well, the bigger your artwork is, the more people are going to see it. Uh, I mean, sure, if you paint in your basement and you have a four foot by six foot painting and you never take it out of your basement or let anybody into your basement, nobody will see it. But I think you know what I mean. The larger the art, the bigger the impression. And that could be scary. And that's okay. I mean, I come up here and do these videos on our YouTube channel. We've got over 100,000 subscribers. Thank you guys all who subscribe and watch our videos and like them. Uh, but every time I do these videos, I take a risk. I might say something that might upset somebody and I am representing my family business up here. And uh, a lot of you guys are our customers and that's not my purpose to come up here and upset anybody, but you might not agree with what I say. And that's okay, but it's a risk I take because I, I think it's better that we start the conversation. So let's just say the point is you want to be able to get to a point in your comfort if you want to go big that your confidence matches that so that you're comfortable because you realize more people will see your art, especially if you're doing murals in public. I mean, that's going to be seen by a lot of people. You have to work up to that kind of, I don't know what the term, I mean, I guess the term is just confidence to, to know that that's okay, that we can go big or we can go home. So when we want to go big, bigger than 18 by 24, what are some tips, tools, things that I can share with you to help you move that along? Because I like big paintings. I like going into museums and seeing, you know, these huge uh, paintings set up. I'm not saying it has to be huge, but like I said, that 18 by 24 is that, you know, kind of point where I'm thinking you might want to consider some changes to what you would normally do for something smaller. So let's just start with something that I consider a fairly easy switch. When you're painting big, and let's say that you, you know, like to use artist grade paints, you understand the value of artist grade paints, you know, they're going to give you the most luminosity, they're going to give you the most um, uh, mixing, they're, they're going to, you know, perform the best of the higher end paint. When it comes to doing large scale paintings, I actually kind of recommend you save those high end paints for your more fine details, your, your main subject. I don't think it's necessary in my opinion to fill a giant canvas with cadmium yellow in the background i mean you can do it of course but perhaps by using something that's not the highest grade quality something you know look at the paints up here these are these are um, artist quality paints they're not the professional creme de la creme but they're still high quality paints but they're at a more reasonable price you can not only save some money but i also feel in some ways if your entire painting is sparkling and luminous with big, bright, professional color. It almost takes away from where you want the eye to be drawn to. And I'm saying you want to use those higher end pigments for your subject, for the fine detail, but covering large surfaces, I mean, this is a 30 by 40 inch canvas right here behind me. It can be very expensive. And also a lot of those very high end pigments don't come in bulk where you can save even more. So you see up here, I've got all kinds of paint that's like 250 milliliters. I think this is a liter. Um, we've got these, uh, Creative Inspirations uh, 16 ounce bottles. You know, these are not only a, a very good paint, but they come in an economy size where you're not really going to find economy sizes too much in fine art paint. They do exist, don't get me wrong, um, but uh, there are certain ways that you can save even more money. So I don't want you to feel like you're doing anything wrong if you're using high end paint. I mean, it, it it's great paint. I mean, that's what makes it a professional level paint. And if you want to use that for the entire thing, go for it. But I'm sort of telling you, I'm giving you permission. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that in my opinion, it's okay to fill in those larger backgrounds, bigger scale areas, especially the larger you get with a more economic grade paint. I'm not saying student grade. I'm not saying, you know, cheap paint. I'm saying paint that is going to give you the good coverage, perform good enough so that you're happy with your artwork, but you can still bring in those fine high-end pigments to those subject matters in the center or wherever they are in your painting to bring the eye to it because those paints are going to be the most luminous, right? Okay, so that's tip number one. Now, the next thing, the next tip, whatever you want to call it, that I want to make sure that you take advantage of is 
understanding, I guess you can call it the right tool for the job um, or maybe the wrong tool for the job. All right, let me show you what I mean. Again, we have that 30 by 40 inch canvas back here. Fairly large size canvas, not the largest, but definitely not small. If I was gonna be doing, you know, let's say, uh, well, maybe, maybe priming it, or maybe I'm filling in a background, this is not a brush I wanna use. Could I use it? Can I use it? Would I use it? Well, I guess those are different things. Could I use it? Yes. Would I? No. Um, and there's many reasons besides the obvious that it would take forever. So obviously, yes, it would take forever. If I was trying to fill this whole thing in with this little dinky brush, it would take a long time. But more importantly, even if I was the most meticulous, using a brush like this to fill in large areas is going to cause streaking. Even if you are trying your best to uh, evenly apply paint, you're going to have little tiny brush strokes that even, even if you spend a, a lot of time with it, it, it's just not worth your time. Invest in a brush that will cover properly. I'm not saying you need to go full mural max, but having a brush that's large for filling in those large spaces, boy, oh boy, does that make your life so much easier. And you don't need a lot of these. Now some of them, like, I don't know, maybe there's a specific use. I, I think that this brush has its place. I'm not sure it's entirely all for art, uh, but it is a large brush. And these large brushes, when you're painting large, uh, can help save you a lot of time. It can also help uh, save you with that appearance. You want it to look as even as possible unless you're going for a certain look. Look, if you're, if you're painting like mosaic tiles, sure, use this and cover the whole area. There's always those outliers, okay? I can hear the comments now like, well, I like to paint in pointillism and I think you're wrong. Well, you're right, I'm wrong if you're painting in pointillism. Completely wrong, I admit it. No need to call me out in the comments. There's tons of other stuff you can call me out in the comments for. Be creative. That's what we're all here for, right? Uh, so yeah, this brush to fill in large areas, not ideal. There's a plethora of tools that you can be using. Okay, now when it comes to these large canvases, there are some other things that I want you to keep in mind, okay? Because when we talk about going big, it, it's sort of like, you know, your surface, well, you're painting on canvas, maybe a very big panel, maybe you're painting on a wall, maybe you're painting on a brick wall, maybe you're painting on a cinder brick wall. There's a lot of different large scale things we can be doing. So we want to take uh, a few things into account when it comes to those different surfaces and what would make them ideal for going big, right? Um, not to mention just the hand fatigue. If you're going up there and spending a, a ton of time uh, filling in these areas, it's not an efficient use of time. You're going to burn yourself out physically having to continue to do these strokes. Do yourself a favor and invest in at least one brush to do on a larger scale. And actually, this can whittle down a bit. The, the tip is use the largest brush you can get away with. So even if we weren't going big, even if I was painting something, you know, reasonably small, 8 by 10, 11 by 14, I still want to use the largest brush I can get away with because that will still give me the best results. Uh, it will give me those less little brush strokes, it will be quicker. So always keep that in mind. Are you using the largest brush that you can get away with to making your art, uh, no matter the size, uh, most efficiently, okay? So let's talk about some of those different services, all right? Canvas, right? Stretch canvas. Pre-stretch canvas or you're stretching it yourself. I'm gonna turn this around. We're gonna do a little reveal here, okay? So I said, this is a 30 by 40 inch canvas. In my opinion, this is the size canvas and above where you really wanna make sure that your canvas has extra support. And by that, I mean cross braces, okay? As the canvas gets more and more paint added to it, it gets heavier, it can start to sag. These cross braces help the canvas remain in its structural form the way it's intended to, okay? So you wanna make sure that you're buying a quality canvas that has cross braces. This is our Paramount, um, this is our Paramount Pro stretch cotton canvas. And at the 30 by 40, you can see there is a cross brace there. Sometimes they get larger, there's another cross brace going up this way, which, well, you couldn't see if it was there anyway. Generally speaking, these cross braces will help keep the form and shape of your art and prevent it from sagging, because nobody wants saggy art. I don't think you want saggy anything. Cross braces, okay, this is a 30 by 40 inch canvas. In my opinion, that's really the area when you start using stretch canvas, you wanna make sure you have some extra support, okay? And 
This right here is your cross brace, and that's gonna keep the shape of the canvas and prevent the canvas from sagging as you add paint to it because it will become heavier and time, pressure, and heat, well, all those things can make things sag. And unless you're a basset hound, you don't want saggage, okay? Yeah. Now this canvas right here is our Paramount Pro canvas. You can see that it comes with the cross brace at 30 by 40. Um, you might find some with cross braces that are slightly smaller, which is fine, it's not gonna hurt anything. But at 30 by 40 and above, I think it's important you really invest in a quality canvas that has the cross brace and not to mention uh, a thicker weight canvas itself. If you're painting on flimsy canvas, you know, eight ounce cotton duct and it's just been primed a bunch of times, it's, it's not ideal. You wanna make sure that you have a rigid structure like the canvas frame and then the canvas itself is a nice, thick, sturdy canvas that will support all that wonderful paint you're going to be putting on it to make your masterpiece. Regardless of what you're painting on, now you listen to me, this is the most serious I'm going to get. I mean this with peace and love I'm saying this. It doesn't matter to me whether you're painting on canvas, on drywall, if you're painting on a brick wall, if you're painting on a cinder block wall, it doesn't matter what you're painting on, okay? You want to make sure your surface is primed, primed. Prime with a gesso so that the paint will not only uh, e be easier to go onto that surface, but it will also stay on the surface and not get sucked into the surface. The reason that stretch canvas is primed is that if there wasn't any primer on here, all the color is going to get sucked right into that canvas and it just loses uh, so much vibrancy. And just a quick layer of just even one coat of primer is better than none. And so regardless of whether you're painting on, like I said, stretch, uh, canvas, stretch canvas, panels, wood, uh, bricks, you want to make sure those surfaces are primed. Primer is not very expensive and it is usually a fairly quick process. Of course it's easy for me to say if you're painting a mural that's on the side of a skyscraper that might be a slightly different story but still if you're doing a project that big you might appreciate uh, where I'm coming from, at least priming certain areas. And, you know, there's Universal Primer, which is, you know, like this uh, Jerry's World's Greatest Gesso. Uh, this Universal Primer will work for oils, acrylics, uh, etc. cetera. Um, however, I will suggest, as always, if you're painting in oils, it is best to use an oil primer. If you're painting in acrylic, acrylic primer. Uh, just, you can use oil on top of an acrylic primer, no problem, you can, but you will always get the maximum results with an oil prime surface uh, with painting oil on top of an oil prime surface, okay? And uh, again with that, uh, we can talk about coverage and using the right tool for the job. Especially these, like some of these gessos come in like um, jars like this, others come in like full-size buckets. You can get these priming brushes. Now these are our Berlin Mottlers, okay? They're multi-use brush, but priming is definitely on the menu. And you can see this is a five inch, this is a six inch brush. I mean, they get very big, okay? And if you can have a brush that you can just simply dip into your gesso, and then again, not doing a thousand strokes to get that hand fatigue, but just do nice, big coverage. Well, that's fantastic, WTF. That's what I say. Um, that's, that's ideal. Now, if you're priming something like canvas, a uh, brush like the Berlin's great, you know. Um, uh, it's a synthetic hair brush. It's got a really nice filament to it. Now, the other thing you want to consider about your brush is, well, what are you painting on? Are you painting on an, ab an abrasive surface, something that's really rough like brick, rock, um, you're going to want a resilient brush. You're going to want a brush that can stand up to that, otherwise you can wear them down to a little nub very quickly. Um, so yeah, so if you're painting, oh boy, that guy right there, okay, um, regardless if it's the priming layer or I guess definitely if you're doing anything, you know, in more fine detail, you want to make sure that your brush is designed for resiliency. Now these Mural Max Pro brushes are very much designed for resiliency. Um, you know, we, 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 we push that when we uh, demonstrate them. You know, they're gonna give you a long life. I mean, if, at the end of the day, if you take anything to an abrasive surface long enough, it will wear down over time, but you wanna maximize the life of that as long as possible. By gessoing and using the right tool for the job, again, going back to that right tool for the job, I think that will be an artist's problem in the future, the right tool for the job. I just like the way that sounds. And this is the right tool for something, but it's not for me. Um, I think that uh, you'll find that your painting adventures will be uh, a lot more pleasant and you'll be reinvesting in brushes a lot less than if you're using 
the wrong tool for the job, okay? So keep that in mind. A brick, a rock, a cinder block is extremely coarse, okay? There's, there's many different kinds of canvas. There's, you know, very smooth canvas, there's rough canvas, but there's really something about that organic rock that just can really, really wear down a brush. So make sure that your brush is a resilient brush. And if you're painting large, you have one of those brushes that say can hold up to that very rough texture, all right? Okay, so we've talked about priming, we've talked about using the right paint for the job. What are some other tips? Well, we often talk about when we're painting in an easel, taking a step back, but boy, the larger you go, the more important that is. And, uh, you know, these longer handle brushes will, you know, help you do that, you know, by naturally doing that. But it's extra important with murals because it's easy to get your perspective messed up. Even if you're, you know, if I'm standing at this distance, which is, you know, back from my art, I'm not all up in it. I'm not all up in its business. Um, it's important that you really step back. The farther the painting, the further you're stepping back to make sure you're getting things in perspective. Now, with that being said, one of my earliest artist problem videos caused a lot of controversy, got a lot of views, maybe turned a lot of people off, which was tracing is it cheating, right? Um, and I stand by a lot of the things I said in that video. I, I do think there were some good points made in the comments about how uh, tracing is used by some art schools and it does have a place, okay? My point was if you want to learn how to do something on your own, a, a tracing, uh, you know, whether it's a, a, a light panel or however you're tracing is a form of a crutch, right? But when you're painting a mural, you're probably already at a certain level or at least or at least you are going to be taking on a project where you probably need a hand. You know, there's nothing wrong with using a ladder if you're painting something that's taller than you, right? So I would suggest a projector if you're going to be painting on a large scale, uh, especially if you don't have kind of like a grid plan of how you're going to do it. That's going to help your perspective stay in line. It's going to help you. Oh, it's going to take so much pressure off you. Just having it projected onto the surface. Now, you're going to want to make sure that your surface is at a perfect 90 degrees if you're going to be doing a projector or your projector is angled appropriately to the canvas but hopefully if you're doing something on a wall it's at 90 degrees otherwise it's probably made on the fly somewhere not not ideal so keep that in mind a projector is an uh, is a good idea if you're worried about keeping your perspectives and just making your life easier you're already going to be spending a lot of time painting these are time saving tips between getting your sketches down filling in large areas using the right tool for the job and also not spending a fortune uh, on certain pigments and paints when you don't necessarily have to. Again, if you have something different or if I miss something, projectors really can just save you a lot of headache. That's the bottom line. You don't need it. It's just something that's another nice tool to have. You don't need to have a 10 foot ladder, but if you're painting large, it's better than a three foot ladder. Something like that, more or less. Um, are you a muralist? Are you somebody that paints big frequently? What did I miss? What did I leave out? What are some of your tips and techniques that you can add in the comments down below? After all, this is an artist community we're trying to form here. I'm trying to form. After all, this is an artist community we have here. And I think that more than just me and my spiel up here, it's important that other artists see what other artists are doing, hear what other artists are doing, because there's more than just what I have to present here. There's If I, if I had to go through all the comments and go through every single point, uh, it would be a very long video, and I have a natural tendency to make them longer than they have to be anyway. If this video is helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell to be notified when we have new videos up for you. And uh, of course, you can always follow me on Instagram at MikeNotJerry, uh, where I continue to disgrace my family name. No, where I continue to have fun with art. Not make fun of art, have fun with art. There is a difference. Learn that the hard way. Nobody wants saggy art. I don't think you want saggy anything. Is there anything saggy you want? Basset hound. Basset hound. They're adorable. <laughs>